I was 13 when I first heard about Aura. Aura, just about the biggest water power project in Western Europe. The job began back in 1913. My father was among the first workers to enroll. The next year, he wrote my mother, telling us all to come up. So we sold the place, packed a wagon, and were on our way. There was plenty of water power in those mountains in the middle of Norway, just waiting to be tamed. The trip was hard, but with us young ones, it was all one big adventure. And then there was the day when we finally came out to the Sundalsfjord, one of those great natural harbors Norway is so proud of. Sundalsöra is small now, just a few shacks, not even a village. But it will be a big town someday, thanks to the electric force that we will release from those mountains. There will be factories and a thriving port and industries. That's what my father said in his letter when he told us to join him. My mother had to ask around before she found someone who knew where he was staying. People everywhere. Two boats filled with new hands were just tying up. The place looked like an anthill, and there was hardly a barn or shack that wasn't used for shelter. Only the first arrivals had been lucky enough to find a room in a farmhouse. Dad wasn't around when we got there. But then I met Kari. She knew the place. She'd know where we could find him. was about all the boys had after the day's work, a place where a week's pay could go over the boards in a couple of hours. He was up on the mountain, working. He was bossing the crew that was putting up a rail line across the plateau. It would haul materials for the big dams and tunnels that were going up there. up there were a wonderful playground, always something new to try, and plenty of chances to work off our energy. Best of all was when we could steal a push car for a ride on the new rails. Looking back now, it's a wonder we weren't all killed. time, I knew a lot about Aura. It was a great project, all right. Father had explained it to me, and now I explained it to Kari. High up there in those mountains, there are lakes with their waters going to waste, spilled all over the mountain flanks. We'll bring those waters together. Waters from six lakes, channel them for 10 miles right up to the Sundalsfjord, and then drop them down a 2,100 feet long tunnel deep inside the rock. 
and that drop would drive the turbines and produce power. It was hard work, long hours, small pay, too small to keep a family. The men tried to get better working conditions. Some got pretty mad. Finally, we all agreed, workers and management, that the union should be organized to speak for us, our men. You should have seen that first Labor Day. Calvo spoke. He was a fine old man. Brothers, he said, our union works. It won't be long before we have an eight-hour day. But soon electricity is going to do the job of muscles, and there's going to be a five-day week, and even vacations with pay. Oh, brothers, there is thunder in those mountains. Every blast up there is a victory for science, for progress, and for us working men. later, everything stopped. All work on Ura, all progress, Europe was at war. I was a boy then, but by the time work started up again, after the war, I had become a man, an Ura man like father and all the others. My first job was with the blacksmith. The boys were touchy about those drills. If the edge wasn't just right, I'd hear about it for a week. I got the same way myself when I started in the tunnel. It was good work, hard work, all by hand. The way those old timers could swing a hammer. We made good progress until 1919. When the Spanish flu hit us. It could finish a man in just a few hours. The flu swept the whole camp. Every day they'd carry men out of the shaft, and some days two or three would die. Help was needed for everyone. Those were black days there on the mountain, and they kept getting worse. The post-war depression had already started. We were all out of a job again. I made the rounds, tried everywhere, always the same answer. If I'd had a wife and young ones, I could have gotten some relief work. But single fellows? Oh, no. I tried everywhere, made the rounds of the farms. Anything? Spreading manure? Plowing? Anything at all for a meal or two? But it wasn't a good time for the farmers either. Up to their ears in debt. Foreclosures always hanging over them. Maybe silver foxes? Might be even interesting work tending foxes. But it was no everywhere. The farmers figured we should move along now that the job was closed down. It made you sick to see all our tools turning into junk. I felt I was walking through a cemetery. But if the river wasn't giving us any power, at least it was giving us fish. I got lots of trout out of that stream. 
You had to hang on somehow. If you lost faith, you were finished. I was lucky. I had Kari, the girl I grew up with. And I had plenty of time to sit with her and to dream about a better future. We used to watch those little drops that meant power, millions of horsepower, wasted, running into the sea. Some people were putting the water to work anyway. I'd watch that wheel spin and think of bigger things. Somehow their enthusiasm made me feel a little better. But otherwise the water was just running to waste. A few local power plants, that was all. It was the Aura project which actually held back everything else in the district. Who wanted to start other power plants when Aura power would be so much cheaper when it finally came? And it. Thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. Those were the worst years. Hungry kids, cold winters, half the country unemployed. Even the river got out of hand, flooded the banks and washed out bridges and houses. Just about cleared out the town down at Ura. did some good. No, something had to be done. They started a flood control project that gave us work for a couple of years at least. It was about then that our people in Parliament set up an hour committee. The only way out, they said, was for the government to take over the project. Three years of hard work and they finally passed the bill, all clear for us to go to work. But that was the spring of 1940. Invasion. Power is vital to the war effort, the Nazis said. One year and the job is done. One year, after having waited for so many years, now we were in no hurry. It was their war effort against us and our allies. That one year soon went by. Not much progress was made. The Germans finally gave up and I wound up in jail for a long time. Work sabotage. When I got out, not much was left. Hard enough to get together a simple house, let alone a power plant. Tools, supplies, machines, we just didn't have them. But then the government took over what the Germans had left. A dirty job trying to salvage stuff from that graveyard. Then things suddenly started moving. Tools, machines, equipment arriving from everywhere. Locomotives, iron, compressors and drills and steel, trucks and cranes and bulldozers from half the countries of Europe. And on lots of those crates there was a label with stars on top and stripes below, the label of the Marshall Plan. It was hard to believe that all those things were being used on our big job. That all these countries were helping us now, helping to beat the mountain, and helping themselves, getting their factories going. So we started moving, this time fast. those modern tools and then you wonder how we made any distance at all by hand. 
It's wonderful to be working with good tools to see the job and away again. We don't have to live in farmhouses either anymore. We have our own homes, settlements and cottages where we can rest for a new day's work. We are a men, we work hard, but that's what we wanted. That's what we've been wanting for close to 40 years now. Attacking the mountain flanks from many sides, high up in the clouds, is dangerous work, but we like it. It will make Aura ready sooner. And work for our is work for us. And the strange thing about this aura, once it's finished, you'll never guess it's there. The tunnels will be inside the mountain, the turbines, the entire works. All you'll see will be the power lines coming straight out of the rock, that's all. The turbines and the tunnels. Today it still seems like a dream. But it won't be long now, that day when we'll be mounting those turbines, getting them ready. And then there will come the breakthrough, when water will roll down that 10-mile tunnel for the first time and drop down 2,100 feet to hit our turbines with half a million horsepower. We sit on that mountain, Kari and I, just like many years ago. The future we used to dream about then was uncertain. Now we know that our dream is coming true. Half a million horsepower, more than we need. We'll send it over the hills to open new districts, start new industry, new towns. We'll send it to other countries too. That's one of the things we in Norway will offer to Europe. Electric power from Aura. Yeah.